The demonstration that you are about to see shows you how to manage and monitor the API Connect Cloud for an on-premises installation of the IBM API Connect version 5 product. The demonstration is part of course WD502 Manage, Monitor and Subscribe APIs with IBM API Connect version 5. For more information about this course and other related courses, see the IBM training website at ibm.com slash training. This demonstration is about configuring the API Connect environment after the prerequisite appliances have been installed. The minimum number of virtual machines to run an IBM API Connect solution is one management server and one gateway server. The gateway server that is used in this example is the Data Power Gateway. Let's log into the Data Power Gateway and look at some of its configuration. Sign in with a user with the admin authority. Notice that the, there are two domains currently configured in Data Power. The default domain, which is the main domain, and a services domain that contains some custom services. From the default domain you can review the network and management settings. Expand the management folder to review the XML management interface. This is the interface that will be used by the API Connect management server to communicate with the Data Power Gateway. This interface must be enabled and running when you configure the gateway in Cloud Manager in a short while. The local address has been defined as an alias named api.think.ibm. Click the Select Alias button to see the actual IP address. The IP address is the same address 192.168.225.52 that was used to sign on to Data Power. You use this address and the port number A little in a little while when configuring the gateway in Cloud Manager. In this part you sign on to the Cloud Manager user interface of API Connect. You see the URL for accessing the Cloud Manager in the address area in the browser. The first part of the address is the IP address of the management appliance of the API Connect solution. Sign in with the administrator user and password that was created when you installed the management appliance. Although the management service is started, it currently does not show any activity in the services overview. Click the Services tab to see the management and gateway services that have been defined. A management service is automatically defined when you installed the management appliance. You see the status, server name and host address of the management server. Scroll down to the Data Power Services 
and notice that currently no servers exist for this service. Click the Service Settings option to review some basic settings for the gateway. Here are the basic settings for the Data Power service. These settings include the display name for the gateway, the gateway host address that resolves to the Data Power IP address, and the port and base ports that will be used for secure communications between the management server and the gateway. Notice that the Data Power domain is grayed. This domain is generated into the Data Power configuration when the gateway is added shortly. In this example, there is no load balancer. Scroll down and see the transport level security profile that is applied. This is the default TLS profile that is supplied with Cloud Manager. Now add a server to the gateway service. Type in the display name that you want and then the address of the data power appliance. This address is the data power appliance address and the XML management interface port number that you saw earlier. Type the username of the administrator for the data power appliance and the administrator password. The network interface is the network interface for the XML management appliance. Click create. This will create a gateway server uh, and generate the data power domain in the data power configuration. This particular step takes quite a while, uh, sometimes up to as much as five minutes. Scroll down and notice the server has been added and the server is now active. If you log on to the Data Power graphical user interface, you notice in the list of domains the API management domain has been added. In this part of the demonstration, you review the settings in the Cloud Manager user interface. Click the Settings tab. An SMTP server is configured. An email server is required to use for email communication when a user or an organization is added. The second tab in the Cloud Manager settings is for the user registries. By default, the Cloud Manager and API Manager both use a local user registry. You can add custom user registries from the User Registries tab in the Cloud Manager. Back on the Settings tab, Use the, you see the port and TLS profile settings that have been configured for communication with the Cloud Manager, API Manager and the Developer Portal. You configure whether or not to use a dynamic DNS scheme in the DNS schemes setting. In the Sandbox Data Power Service, you specify the name of the Data Power Service that you use for the Sandbox Catalog. 
The advanced settings are only configured when you have multiple management and gateway servers in your API Connect topology. In this example, there are no load balancing servers since there is only one management and one gateway server. Here you see the default transport level security profile that is created automatically when the management server is installed. The default TLS profile is a default secure sockets profile that includes a factory supplied identity certificate that is supplied by API Connect. This is an internal certificate that can be used when connecting and authenticating with the Cloud Manager, API Manager and the Developer Portal user interfaces. The default TLS profile also includes a trust store that has been generated by the API Management Service to store the factory supplied identity certificates or certificates from trusted certificate authorities. The default supported protocols are displayed at the bottom of the page. Here you see the users that are defined in the Cloud Manager. There is only one user defined in the Cloud Manager repository with the name of admin and with the role of Cloud Owner. In the case of the example configuration that is used for the demonstration, the Cloud Manager and API Manager each have their own local repository that do not share users. Now you review the Organization tab in the Cloud Manager. In this example, two organizations have already been added. You are going to add an organization and you do this by clicking the Add Organization tab. Type an organization name, for example, Stores. The name is added automatically in lowercase to the name since the organization name is used as part of the URI path when calling an API or signing on to the developer portal. When you add an organization you also specify an owner. The owner can be a user that is already defined in the API Manager user repository or a new user. To search for an existing user, type the substring of the user in the search area, select the user that you want to use to be the organization owner, then click Add. The organization is added with the owner being the owner that you specified from the existing users in the API Manager repository. Since the owner already exists in the repository, the organization is made active immediately. Open the A API Manager user interface from a browser tab with the URL of the management server followed by the suffix slash APIM. Type in the username and password then click sign in. Sign in with the email address of the owner of the provider organization that was created in the cloud manager. From the Navigate to menu, you can select which organization 
you want to work with if the user is the owner of more than one provider organization. This page shows the Sandbox catalog that is automatically created for you in API Manager. In this part of the demonstration, you sign on to the Cloud Manager as the Cloud Administrator. In the Services Overview pages, you now see some graphical representations of resource usage for the management service. The graph displays the average CPU, average memory, and average disk usage for the time period. In this case, the time period is the last seven days. You can filter the time to be any duration from a list of periods. The Relative tab records the time up until the present day. The Absolute time lets you select the from and to dates from a calendar. When you change the time filter, you can select Auto Refresh to display the new graphs. There is also analytical data of resource usage of the average CPU, average mem memory, and average disk used for the gateway service for the same time period.